Good morning and welcome to episode 21 of the Willow Cove Crafts podcast, a podcast about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Willow Cove Crafts. Today is Sunday, January 30th, 2022. And I am coming to you from just outside of Madison in Verona, Wisconsin. It has been about a week since I last recorded and it was a pretty typical week. Um, Work, come home, knit, get up and do it all over again the next day. Um, A couple fun things we did or I guess one fun thing we did is yesterday, Dan and I went over to our friend's house. We had kind of like an outdoor hangout. My friends put together a fire. We had the hot dogs and, you know, drinks and chips. And it was kind of like an outdoor winter barbecue for lack of a better word. Um, It was really cold. Um, but we are still trying to be a bit cautious, what with the Omicron surge. And so we hung out outside, even though it's the middle of winter, but we got all bundled up and there was a big fire and it was a lot of fun. Um, and maybe the highlight of that event was, um, uh, two of my friends who are a couple just had their first baby in December and they brought her and I got to meet her and um, it's very sweet. She was all bundled up in this like cute little bear suit and I don't know, baby clothes are just so cute. Um, yeah, the only other big update is that... Um, If you're a returning viewer, you will know that I am in the process of uh, having a surgery done um, and that has been scheduled. So I will be going into the hospital on February 16th. That's the day of my uh, shoulder surgery. It's not really a shoulder surgery. Um, For those of you that are new, I go into a lot of detail in some of my other videos, um, but I have uh, some vein and artery compression in my shoulder. And so they will be going in and removing my top rib in order to um, create some more space for uh, my veins and arteries. And so that will be happening on February 16th, so just a couple weeks away. And um, I will be staying in the hospital at least two nights, I believe is what they told me. So hopefully I'll then come home. The 16th is a Wednesday, so then I'll come home on Friday and then I will be off of work for a couple weeks while I recover. Um, So yeah, it's not too far away. I am actually going to be starting to um, kind of quarantine a little bit or at least you know, limit the amount of, you know, social interactions I have. Um, I have to take a COVID test before my surgery. And um, if it's positive, we'll have to reschedule it. And I'm getting really anxious about it. And so if, you know, we had to reschedule, I think that would be pretty upsetting. I'm like really looking forward to just like getting it done and getting it behind me. And so if it got postponed for some reason, I think that would be, that would make me really sad. Um, So anyways, I will be staying home a lot over the next couple weeks and hopefully be getting a lot of knitting in before, before that. Um, I did want to give a big thank you to everyone who reached out to me over the last couple weeks about my surgery. Um, like I said, I know it will be fine, but I am really nervous about it. Um, I think about it constantly. It's just this like huge mental burden that I have. Um, but reading all of your really kind comments, um, you know, it's gotten me like 
kind of pumped up like you know I can do this I can do hard things and it's gonna be fine and it's not gonna be fun but it's gonna be fine and it's gonna be better in the long run and yes so again big thank you I really appreciate all of your support and kind words and yeah now we just kind of have to wait a couple weeks um and then we'll see how much knitting I get done afterwards. I am cautiously optimistic that I will be able to knit pretty quickly after my surgery, but I don't really know. I have no idea what to expect. Um, I'll be in a lot of pain afterwards, but like maybe if I can like stabilize my shoulders a little bit, you know, knitting is mostly a wrist movement. So I don't know. And then there's like, if your project is kind of big and you have to like lift it, you know, that's maybe something that would be hard afterwards. Um, I asked on my Instagram stories a couple days ago for suggestions for really simple projects that I could potentially try and do. Um, so yeah, if you have any suggestions for like large, simple things, um, I don't want anything like too complicated because I don't know where my mind's gonna be at afterwards, um, how well I'll be able to focus or even like maneuver to do something a little bit more complex. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Um, I am looking for, you know, what I'm gonna be working on if I can work on anything after my operation. So I would love to hear from you all if you um, have any thoughts on some new cast on ideas that might fit the bill for this next couple weeks. So let's get into some knitting content today. To start us off, I wanted to share what I am wearing. Um, I finished this sweater in the fall, maybe. Um, this is the Ith Sumac sweater by Orlane Suka. I don't know if it's Sumac or Sumac. I think it's in reference to a plant. I'm not sure. I could be completely making up everything I'm saying at the moment. But it is uh, by Orlane Suka, and I knit this in Cascade 220 out of the eggplant colorway, I believe. Um, and I will try and insert some video of me wearing it so that you can get the full picture, but it is a really cozy and warm worsted weight sweater. It's got uh, textured stitches all over. Um, the top of the sweater has some kind of extra added interest with different types of textured stitches. Um, and yeah, and then the body is just an all over kind of chevron zigzag type pattern. Um, something that really attracted me to this sweater was the sleeves. I really liked the vertical lines that were made on the sleeves. And I really love to cuff the sleeves of my sweaters. And so I do that a lot when I wear this. Um, I typically will just wear it with a pair of jeans. Um, and yeah, it's got a nice boxy fit. I really love this sweater. I have no finished objects today, so we will jump right in to works in progress. Um, I thought I might have a finished object for today, but I was not monogamous on my project this week. Um, I've been touting about how I want to become a monogamous knitter or a mostly monogamous knitter in my last few episodes. I feel like I sound like a broken record and I still do. However, my main project this week was a bit mentally taxing. Um, it's a really fun knit, but it does require a lot of concentration. Um, and you know, I just occasionally needed a little bit of a break from it. Um, it's a quick knit, however, you know, every row is different. Um, there's not, 
I mean, there's obviously rhyme or reason to each row, but it's not completely obvious at the time. You know, I'm constantly having to look at the pattern. So, um, yeah, sometimes after a long day at work, that is just not the type of project I want to work on. So, um, anyways, I did get a lot of progress done. Um, I introduced this project last week. I am making the Selbu Mittens by Skein Deer Knits, and I am using Rauma Strikagarn, the three-ply Strikagarn. This is one of Rauma's DK weight yarns. It's 100% Norwegian wool. It says Nor School, which I believe is Norwegian for Norwegian wool. Uh, correct me if I'm incorrect on that. Um, and I am using two colors, color 101, which I believe is the cream, and color 105, which is the dark gray. This is getting blown out a little bit, but I do think um, in real life this is a bit of a darker gray. Eh. I always try to do this hand thing to get more color accuracy and it just doesn't do anything. So um, I have a big window right here. So some of my darker colored yarns tend to get a little blown out. That is fine. Um, so these are them together. I'm running a little low on the gray. Um, hopefully I have enough, but I am almost done. Um, so the Selbo mittens are a pretty popular pattern. Um, they are a traditional Norwegian knitting pattern, um, and they are color work. So I finished, mm, I didn't quite finish the first mitten, but I finished last week. I was down here where this marker is. Hopefully you can see that. And since then I knit up and finished, uh, we'll call it the body of the first mitten because I still have not put the thumb in. So anyways, the, the color work is really fun, but again, every row is different. I have to constantly be checking the chart. There's no, I really like color work knitting, but I prefer knitting patterns where there's a specific repeat. So like my sweater, I just knit my Foika sweater. You know, every row is different, but you're doing the same six stitch repeat over 200 stitches. And so you can kind of get into a bit of a rhythm with whatever that stitch repeat is for that row. This, it's different the whole way across the top of the mitten. The back is pretty intuitive and pretty consistent. Um, but yes, I have finished the left mitten sans thumb. And it's getting a little caught on my sweater. But here it is. I'm really excited to block these and just kind of see. I think the color work looks pretty even now, um, but it's always so satisfying to block color work and see it get really, really even. And then I am pretty far along on the right hand mitten. You can see I just have a couple inches left uh, until that one is done. So I probably could have finished these this week, but again, I didn't always feel like working on them. I tried to do a little bit each day and then when I got to the point where my brain was a little tired, I would set these aside and work on something else. Um, but I am actually really hopeful that maybe I will finish these up today, if not today, tomorrow, and then I will get them blocked. And hopefully this will be a finished object for next week's episode. And then I will have a cozy pair of mittens to wear the rest of winter. Even though <laughs> I'm quarantining the next two weeks and then I'm gonna be in the hospital and then I'm gonna be home for three weeks straight. I probably won't leave my house until the end of February, but I will have mittens ready and waiting for when that day comes. So 
I really love how these are turning out. They are super fun. Um, and yeah, I think they look really nice. My next work in progress this week is what I would work on in the evenings after work when I didn't feel like working on my mittens. Um, and that is my granny stripe blanket. This is kind of my long-term project for the year. Um, I'm really trying to finish it by the end of 2022. Uh, we'll see. It's a big blanket. Um, I measured it this week width-wise and it is 92 inches wide, which puts it at about a king size, I believe. Um, I meant for it to be queen size, but I definitely overshot um, my uh, first set of chains. Um, but anyways, I am making the um, granny stripe blanket based off of the instructions by Attic24. If you Google search granny stripe blanket Attic24, you should uh, be taken to her blog and see her instructions. Uh, the instructions on her blog are for a DK weight blanket, but I am doing mine out of fingering weight yarns. Um, you know, you just kind of have to adjust uh, your stitch count, but essentially the instructions are exactly the same. Um, so the first thing I did this week, and I wanted to show you all, is I wound up a magic knot ball. Um, I like to do balls with 10 minis in them. So I make 200 gram cakes, roughly. Um, that's not right. Around 200 grams, I would say, maybe a little more. Um, but I have a big bag of mini skeins. And so what I'm kind of doing is I like reach into my bag and like randomly grab 10 different minis um, because I want this blanket to be pretty random, pretty hodgepodge. Um, so I will go in and grab 10 different minis and then amongst those 10, I'll kind of put them in an order that I really like and then I will wind them up on my uh, ball winder and Swift. Um, and then yeah, I'm doing Magic Knot, which um, again, if you Google Magic Knot, you should be able to find a tutorial, but it is a pretty sturdy knot that I've never had come undone. I've used it quite a bit for scrappy projects. Um, and because this is a crochet project, I don't really concern myself with the knots in there. If I was doing a knitting project, I don't like to have knots. I feel like the knitting fabric, the knitted fabric is a little bit more fine and the knot is a little more noticeable, but the crochet fabric is a little bit thicker. I feel like the knots just kind of settle in there and you don't really see them or notice them or feel them. Um, so yeah, that is what I am doing. And so I will wind up 10 minis, do my little magic knot. And so now I can just crochet right off of this uh, for hours and hours and it's all set and ready to go for me. So this week I put on, you can see my marker where I was last week. This is folded up into eighths right now. So you can kind of get an idea of how wide the blanket is going to be. Um, but I added three stripes. We've got this really dark, deep purple, which was actually one of my personal leftovers from a shawl I knit my aunt a really long time ago. And then this green speckly mini. And then now I'm onto this really warm brown. I love that color. I would love a sweater out of that color. Um, so yeah, I'm always surprised at how quick this goes. I didn't work on this a ton this week. Again, it was kind of my like secondary project, um, but I still managed to get three stripes in. And then, you know, that's kind of a head start. I mentioned this before, but my to kind of get this done by the end of the year, what I'm trying to do is do 10 stripes per finished object. So once I finish my mittens, I will 
oh my blanket, 10 stripes. And so that's what this cake is, is the 10 stripes uh, that I'm putting into my blanket after I finish my mittens. And so I've got a little bit of a head start. You know, three out of 10 is not too bad. So yes, when I uh, hopefully finish my mittens today or tomorrow, this will become my main project until I crochet all of this in to my blanket. My last work in progress this week has been what I have been working on while I am out of the house, typically at work on meetings. I really like to keep my hands busy. I think it helps me focus. So I like to have a simple project at the ready to work on during those times. The mittens and the crochet blanket are not good projects for that situation. So I have something else on the go. Um, so it's moving along pretty slowly. Um, I obviously don't get a ton of knitting time at work. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of there and ready for me when I need it. I think they are vacuuming in the hallway, so hopefully you can't hear that too well. Um, but anyways, I am working on my Illuminate sweater by Andrea Maori. I started this last August and have been slowly plugging away at it ever since. The two yarns I am using for this sweater are the Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool. This is 100% Superwash American Wool, and this is a sport weight yarn, and the colorway I am using is Rusted Rainbow. And then my contrasting color is the Isair Silk Mohair. This is 75% kid mohair, 25% silk. It's a lace weight. Um, and you hold this double in this pattern when you get to these sections. Um, and I am using the colorway Rose. And since last time, where was I? Last episode, I was, you know, just a few rows shy of finishing the bottom ribbing. So I have since done that. And then I have started the first sleeve. So I've gotten a few rows done. There are a few inches, I should say. Um... I keep trying this sweater on because the sleeves look really skinny to me. I don't know if you all agree. It fits. I'm constantly surprised. Every time I try it on, I'm like, this is not gonna fit. This sleeve is way too thin, um, but it fits. I don't know, it's magic. Um, I did try this sweater on. I've been trying it on as I go and I thought I had it to a good length. Um, I think it is a tad bit short. Um, however, I am pretty optimistic that once I block this, it's going to grow a little bit. Again, the spin cycle is super wash. So super wash yarns tend to grow a little bit when you block them. Um, because of that super wash treatment, the yarn uses loses some of its stickiness and so once you get it wet it kind of shifts a little bit more and tends to grow a bit more than a non-superwash yarn. So anyways I think if I could get a couple extra centimeters out of this when I block it it will be perfect. Um, and most of my sweaters I think tend to get a little bit bigger after blocking so it is a little small now but I'm not super worried about it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pause for a second because I feel like the vacuum cleaner in the hallway is getting very loud. All right, I can still hear the vacuum cleaner, but it sounds like they are way down the hall, so hopefully you can't hear it at all. Um, I live in an apartment building and they obviously have to do uh, some maintenance and cleaning in the hallways from time to time, so we will just be flexible. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about this sweater is I tried something new this time for the bind off for the bottom hem. 
Um, I tried this on the recommendation of Andrea Mowry, who has an amazing podcast. You should definitely go watch. It's called I'll Knit If I Want To by Andrea Mowry, who I'm assuming we've all heard of. She's amazing. But um, she recommended a lot of her patterns use the tubular bind off, which I've never tried before. I don't know if I think it's worth the effort um or maybe I just don't care that much for kind of a seamless bind off and cast on um I think kind of regular cast ons and binds offs look fine I guess um but anyway she said in um she said this in a couple of her episodes but when she doesn't use the tubular bind off and she needs a stretchy bind off, particularly for, you know, cuffs and hems and things like that. What she will actually do is just do a regular bind off, nothing super fancy, um, but she will go up four or five needle sizes. Um, and that kind of guarantees that you, you know, bind off loosely. We see that written out in a lot of patterns. And so instead of using the same needle size and binding off loosely and like letting your hands do the work. She always says, I'd rather let the tools do my work for me than my hands. Um, so you just go up um, a couple needle sizes and then you kind of just do a standard bind off and that gives the stitches obviously more room to stretch um, compared to uh, your knit fabric. Um, so I did that. I knit the ribbing at the bottom in a size two needle and I bound off in a size six, I believe. And I think it worked really well. It's still a firm bind off, which I think you want for the bottom of a sweater. You don't want it to flare too much, um, but it does have quite a bit of stretch. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and yeah, I think that might be what I do from now on when binding off things. And I especially like, I think some of the bind offs, like um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off comes to mind. Those are almost too stretchy. And so you get a bit of a flare at the bottom, um, which I think you do a little but not nearly as much as with some of those like stretchy bind offs. And I think that'll even out a bit when I block it. Um, but yeah, maybe give that a try with your next bind off if you are like me and don't want to deal with tubular bind offs or any sort of sewn bind off. Um, yeah, I just think they're too much. Um, I don't know if I would recommend this for a shawl um, I've got a couple other bind offs I really like to use for shawls when you need it to be really stretchy. Um, but yeah, for a sweater or for a toe up sock, um, when you want it to be stretchy but not too stretchy, uh, I think this is a pretty good technique that uh, maybe you would also like to try. That is it for my works in progress this week. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you today was a little bit of a product spotlight. Um, this is not sponsored. This is something I purchased myself. I saw it, I think on the Espas Trico podcast, they showed this product and I was like, I need one of those. And then um, as I was getting ready to film today, I was looking at my sweater that I'm wearing right now and I was like, man, my sweater is getting really pilly and I need to take care of that and then I thought I will wait to take care of it uh, until I film it so I could show you this um so what I'm going to show you today is a product called the gleaner you may have heard of it um I feel like a lot of people have heard of this but none of my friends who are knitters actually have one of these so maybe they're not as popular as I think um when I saw this it was like an absolute must-have um, so if you don't have one of these, 
I recommend you go get one. I asked for this for Christmas one year and my sister got it for me. But what it is, is a depiller. This is what it looks like. I think it comes in a couple different colors for the handle. Mine is really dirty because I use it a lot. Um, and it comes with a couple different, pull these out. It comes with a couple different heads. Um, this is the fine, coarse, and medium is the one I use the most often. Um, and I think which one you use just kind of depends on what, um, typically what weight your yarn is if you are using a or if you're trying to depill a thinner yarn, I would use the fine one and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but yes, something to call out is uh, your sweaters and your knits are always going to pill. I think a lot of people are always looking for a yarn that won't pill. Um, you know, maybe if there are garment pills, they think they did something wrong, uh, but that is not the case. Every animal-based fiber will pill at some point. Some will pill sooner than others. Um, typically, that kind of comes with, you know, there's a couple factors that come into play when we're considering how quickly a yarn will pill. Uh, staple length, shorter staple length yarns. And when we say staple length, we're talking about the length of the hair that that sheep had. So shorter staple length will pill a lot more easier than longer staple length. Um, shorter staple lengths are also your softer yarns, so people are really attracted to those, I think. Um, but the softer the yarn, typically the quicker it will pill. Um, and then twist is the other big thing that comes into play. A more tightly twisted yarn will not pill as easily as a looser twisted yarn. Um, but they will all pill eventually. Um, so I decided to kind of wait to show you, hopefully you can see that, but the sleeve of my sweater is pretty pilly and my underarm is pretty pilly. You know, these kind of areas of high friction, they get a lot of pills. And so what this does, and it's perfectly safe. I was a little nervous to use it the first time because I thought maybe it would rip my knitted fabric, um, but it does not. And it kind of works just like a razor. You just scrape and it makes this terrible noise, but that is all part of the process. And you just scrape until things seem good. This is a lot easier to do when you are not wearing your sweater. And you can see, you know, I'm getting this fluff. These are all of the pills that the gleaner has removed from my sleeve. And already, let me put this down, you can probably see a big difference between my ungleaned sleeve and my gleaned sleeve. Um, it, um, a good deep pilling will make your very worn looking sweater look almost brand new again. Um, so what I like to do, um, I'll kind of peel, depill as I go. If I think it's looking a bit scraggly, I'll give it a depill. Um, and, and I also try and depill my sweaters before I put them away for the warmer months. Um, I tend to, to not wash my sweaters much over the course of the whole like fall, winter, spring season. Um, and then I will wash them all together once I think um, summer is here to stay. Um, but anyways, I'll depill them, I will wash them, put them away for the season. Um, and yeah, I end up with this like huge pile of fluff next to me from the depiller. Um, but anyways, I think it's really great. It's super satisfying to depill a sweater if you've never done it. It's just one of those things that, you know, really, at least for me, I love to do it. It's one of my favorite knitting tasks is depilling my sweaters. I think it's a lot of fun to just like scrape and get all of that junk off of it. And it's really satisfying. And then my sweaters look really nice after the fact. So 
Uh, yes, I highly recommend the Gleaner if you have never tried one. And that is everything for me today. Um, over the next week until I record again, I think I'm going to continue working on my same projects that I showed you today and hopefully get a lot of progress done on them. Again, I don't foresee myself doing much this week. I'm uh, looking to stay home as much as possible so that I can get that positive COVID test or not positive, that negative COVID test before my surgery in a couple weeks. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me today. Um, if you liked this video and want to be notified when I post more, please hit that subscribe button. Um, and yeah, if you could like this video, if you have something you would like to say, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you all. Um, thank you for being so wonderful. I will talk to you all next week. Bye everyone. Bye.